Hey, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here and you're an automotive technician, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that hopefully help you make more money and be more efficient. And if you're a customer of one of these technicians, you're gonna get an insight into what we do on a daily basis to fix your vehicle. So I hope you enjoy the next video. Alright guys, I uh, screen recorded reprogramming this Nissan with uh, NERS, the J2534 uh, standalone software and uh, I noticed I left out some stuff when I was going to go through and voice over it so I just thought I'd do a quick little intro to give you some of the things I forgot um, well, to go over why I left myself some time to do it and then, uh, then we'll get right to the video. So some pretty common stuff that we found so you need to use a good quality um, flashing power supply that keeps the voltage uh, extremely constant. Uh, we use either like the Schumacher INC 700A which is the same unit that's in the snap-on standalone smart charger they sell. <clears throat> but uh, the Nissan NERS manual recommends 12.0 to 13.5 volts so we usually set it at 13.4. Make sure the battery posts are clean and you have a good quality battery in it. Uh, make sure that if it's a vehicle with electric f cooling fans that uh, they're unplugged. Um, once the NERS starts the programming procedure, it will pull the PCM off the network. Once the rest of the vehicle realizes there's no coolant temperature sensor um, data being broadcast from the PCM for, for coolant temp, it's going to automatically default to turning the fans on. That can cause a big current fluctuation, especially if it's trying to multi-speed it. Um, so that can cause a flash fail. Also look and see if the DLC plug is black. Almost all Nissan DLCs are white. Um, so if you see it's black, it may be a vehicle that was purchased at a buy here, pay here place that has a, um, a GPS unit installed. And when they do that, a lot of the time they pull the factory DLC, plug in their GPS device, and then put a, a black DLC in and the uh, GPS device is piggybacked. So we find that that causes a lot of flash issues as well. Uh, with voltage fluctuations. Uh, make sure the blower is turned off, not on low. You want to you want to physically look at that. Just make sure there's no accessories plugged in, like accessory stuff in the plugs, uh, phone chargers, GPS units, stuff like that. Then if you do have a failure of programming, uh, don't turn the key off. Make sure that you leave it on. Uh, get a hold of somebody around you that has a Consult 3 Plus, um, the OE tool, um, and usually it can be recovered if that's the case. If you cycle the key after it fails in the middle of a flash, most likely the module will lose um, all of its base programming and it'll be corrupt, uh, so it'll, it probably won't even communicate anymore. It'll uh, not be worth trying to save, probably take a lot of EEPROM work to do. Um, the other big thing is make sure that if you are replacing a module, um, a PCM, that uh, if the, the vehicle is a module that any NATS information, Nissan anti-theft system information is stored in the, in the module you're replacing, um, that you have the pin code ready and uh, all the keys that you want programmed to the vehicle because once you're done reprogramming the PCM you will need to uh, re-register all the NAT stuff, uh, write the VIN, do relearn the idle, idle, idle speed, target RPM, idle volume learn. Um, so you got to make sure you have the pin code if you're going to have to do that um, and then make sure you have a capable scan tool uh, to complete those before you start. Uh, so that's the major stuff on the side of errors if you get an ONC error as an Oscar Nancy Charlie um, it's probably an out-of-date CSV file or uh, just an unrecognized um, transmission or engine reprogramming file um, you just want to make sure the most current because if you have a newer version of NERS and an older version of the CSV I've noticed sometimes it cause conflicts and you just have to update the CSV file um, or just simply reinstall NERS, sometimes fix it, it just depends. Um, if you get an error where you get all the way through and you try to select the newest file and it shows zero kilobytes, um, either the CSV file, if it's the latest one, uh, then the calibration could just be up to date and not need an update, um, but I show you how to check that beforehand in the video. Or you could have an old CSV file um, that doesn't have the newest um, update the CSV file st stores the information for NERS that tells it what if it has X file then it needs Y file 
Well, if it has Y file in the CSV file, but there's been an additional update since then, then it will show zero kilobytes. So if you do not have an updated CSV because you're reusing um, files you've already downloaded once, um, it may not it may show zero kilobytes even when you know there's a program file being uh, that needs to be done, a calibration needs to be done. So we'll get right to the the actual process, uh, but that's the information I wanted to kind of put out there ahead of time, hopefully answer questions before they come up. Okay guys, so I'm out here to shop uh, reprogramming a 2011 Ultima for a P0101. Uh, the shop's requesting I flash for this. I haven't done any diagnostics on the vehicle to confirm that it's just a flash and not a vacuum leak or something. Uh, so before you start a flash, always check your uh, factory service information to make sure you have all the tooling required and that you have everything to do the job. Uh, the service information happens to be in the TSB on this one. The most important part is just make sure you've got a tool that you can relearn the throttle valve close position, the idle air volume learn, and the accelerator close position before you start. Make sure you have a tool that will do that. Uh, and since we're just reprogramming this PCM, we most likely will not need to do any um, anti-theft functions with the keys. So after that, I usually use the Shopforman Pro software that's with my Bosch VCI, just because it's super fast to pull the calibration numbers. So if I go into just generic OBD2 and, and new scan it, it'll pretty quickly pull up what I need to get this. It's usually faster than pulling a scan tool. So I'll, I'll go in and select the uh, vehicle information, but this will do a ton of generic OBD2 functions. The software will. Um, so we'll select vehicle info. I'm not really worried about saving it at this point. And we see it gives me the calibration ID directly right there. Now it always adds a one in front of it, so really the calibration ID is ZX56 Alpha. And all that is is the last five digits of the calibration number. I know that this generation of PCMs always start with a 23710 if you're doing a recalibration. Uh, blank PCMs are a different story. So once I've decided that, I'll go ahead and go to um, nissan-techinfo.com, go there. We'll select our country region. We'll go to NERS J2534 reprogramming. And then there's a lot of stuff that's available, but we're just using reprogramming using a J2534 device. You'll notice that it does say that 3.08 is the recommended latest version. Even though they did release 4.0 the other day, they actually retracted it off the website. It's probably pretty unstable. So we'll put 23.7.10 as the first five, because like I said, that's just what it is. You can also find that in other information. Uh, other scan tools will sometimes give you the whole number. So if we put that in, it'll immediately tell us that we have an update required and it should be a 9HA7 Delta. So if you select that part number, it shows you that you can, that's the new part number that's listed from the old part number. If we click submit, then it tells us, all right, so we can purchase the data file. That's 20 bucks and it gives you the CSV and the .dat file. So I already have those um, and an up-to-date CSV so we'll go ahead and and just continue on. Okay, in the NERS manual we can see here that it gives us the location of where to put the files. So since we're doing just a reprogramming and not a blank programming, we'll use this bottom location here. And this is where we'll put our .dat and .csv file that was downloaded from the Nissan Tech Info website. So from that point we'll go ahead and open up NERS. And it takes a second to open now. Once it boots up, it gives you a few uh, extra things to deal with here. You'll want to make sure you follow those instructions. They're actually fairly important. Um, the only one I don't do is turn my cell phone off. Um, I, I do it as much as possible, but I, I usually forget. But all the other information that's on there is pretty important. Especially that never turn the ignition off, because like I said, it'd be a pretty expensive brick. So we're going to go ahead and go forward. We're going to select our VCI we're using. This one, the Bosch MVCI. Then we're, it's just going to give me information on my VCI I'm using. We're going to be reprogramming the engine, at least the engine computer. This takes a second. I'll cut out some of the time. So that was probably a total of one minute. So then we'll scroll down and select our old calibration that was in the PCM, the one that we noticed before. And that was ZX56 Alpha. You notice all of them are 23710s. So it tells us that the CSV files we have downloaded 
points to a new file of 9HA7 Delta and it shows a kilobyte size there. So we'll click next. That also takes a few minutes. Make sure your voltage is fairly stable. It'll always jump around like that. And it's just telling you your current part number and the new one we're gonna install. So if everything looks good, go ahead and click start. All right, voltage looks good, so we'll go ahead. So right here, it's gonna to get to 95% pretty quick of left. And what that means is when it gets to 5%, NERS is gonna start checking your voltage. So it's gonna sit here for about a minute and check that your voltage is stable. Um, if it fails right here and says programming error, you'll know that you have an unstable voltage fluctuation. You start looking for accessories plugged in or bad battery cables or something. So the flash actually took, I don't know, 15 minutes. I skipped through all that. So then once it gets to that point, it'll tell you to cycle the ignition off for one minute or more, and then you'll turn it back on, uh, and then you'll need to press OK. But you need to do all that within 20 minutes, so you don't want to leave this unattended. So then it'll say ECU reprogramming complete. Now this sets here for probably three minutes, and you're like, well, am I done or not? But um, it takes some time. I'll skip through that. And then right here, I usually click export make a print file and then print it off for the customer so they know the date and timestamp of when I updated it, what the old software was, what the new one was. It's kind of a CYA thing. And uh, that's pretty much it. And then you want to go through, like I said, with your scan tool and do all your relearns. All right, guys. Till next time. All right. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, you'll probably like this video or even this video. And remember, subscribe, comment below, tell me what you didn't like about it or what kind of videos you'd like to see next, and hit the bell icon. That way you get a notification every time I make a new video, which is almost weekly now. So see you next time.